Our next guest has dedicated his professional career to the science of fertility. Dr. Cutluck Octe is a clinician and scientist and a leading expert having performed the world's first ovarian transplantation procedures. Today, he continues to be a pioneer in fertility preservation. Welcome, Doc. What should Thank we you. know about fertility? Um, a lot. A lot. Okay. It's a hot button topic. Yeah. Yeah. Hot button topic. Yeah. Pay attention. We have about two hours here. Is that yeah. right? Okay. <laughs> good. Uh, well, I think the most important to know about it is that fertility is not endless. That uh, it, it will it will actually slow down and eventually disappear. So one of the when does it slow down? Yeah. So uh, uh, when it comes to uh, uh, women. Um, that slowdown happens uh, around mid 30s, so uh, you know that's that's one of the most important things that we need to know about mm. uh, fertility, and especially if you're planning your uh, future desired uh, family, um, you know you don't really you know women actually um, have reproductive life supposedly from puberty on till about 50 or so, but only about maybe two thirds of that really fertile. So and most women do not realize that, and by the time they come to us, it's already become very challenging to deal with. So yeah, the most important thing you need to know about fertility is that it has its limitations. Hmm. I think um, I read recently there's a new study that for men there's also a benchmark that after the age of 40, the quality of sperm goes down by about 30%. Um, is that part of your studies as well, or Abs just female fertility? No, absolutely. We're actually doing some important research uh, in men as well, and we're finding that uh, um, there is actually an age-related uh, decline in sperm quality, and um, the DNA damage in sperm goes with age, and the reason for that is the ability of sperm to repair DNA damage that is induced by all environmental factors goes, uh, goes down, and that's actually the same for eggs, so uh, um, and that's why um, you know if you look at some of the studies, um, children born from older men tend to have some uh, um, more common uh, genetic or uh, similar uh, traits. For for example, learning disabilities, etc. Um, so uh, absolutely, uh, we're learning now that uh, male part becomes important, especially past 40 or 50. So what is ovarian transplantation? Does, wow, uh, great. <laughs> yeah, so you pioneered this. Evidently, you take healthy tissue and transplant it? Um, correct. It's a fertility preservation technique. And uh, um, when uh, um, a, a woman, even a child, is faced with a condition that can affect their fertility, that could be cancer treatments, that could be genetic conditions, um, then uh, we can remove the ovarian tissue with a simple procedure uh, it's a keyhole procedure, laparoscopic procedure. Then it's frozen with a specialized process, an automated uh, programmable machine and uh, with special substances like a, a antifreeze that protects the integrity of the tissue. And that can be frozen until this person desires to have a child or cured from cancer. And then we reconstruct this tissue and time comes, we thaw it, reconstruct this and, and uh, with a technique that I developed using robotic surgery. We put it back in the same person. Pay, pay, put yeah. back in the same patient. I have patients who have been in menopause uh, for four, 10 years, 15 years, and, and now they are cured from their conditions. We transplant their tissues. They ha now they have babies. Whoa. They're coming for more babies. Um, and, uh, and about two-thirds of these women would actually have babies naturally. They don't even have to resort to any kind of uh, wow. IVF or similar procedures, yes. And so where does this go on the sort of risk scale of, you know, mm -hmm. simply freezing your eggs and, and protecting mm -hmm. those versus freezing your actual ovarian tissue? Yeah, that's, what are the risks? That's factors? an excellent question. When you're freezing eggs, um, you're sort of uh, collecting the eggs you would normally lose anyway. I mean, women kind of constantly lose eggs. Uh, um, they start life with one million eggs. They only ovulate about 500, but by the time you get to menopause, everything is gone. So 99.9% .9 are kind of wasted anyway. So when you do egg freezing, you're kind of collecting those spare eggs. Uh, when you do an ovarian f tissue, you're actually removing part of the organ. And so we have to have a risk-benefit ratio. If somebody is having chemo, who's going to lose fertility anyway, that's an easier uh, decision to make. But because ovary has a lot of redundancy, um, you can actually preserve tissue from healthy women too. And the advantage of ovarian freezing over egg freezing is that um, you are restoring hormonal function. So with egg freezing, you cannot reverse menopause. We are reversing menopause. That would have to go to oh. a donor then. Correct. And uh, 
uh, we're reversing menopause and also we're restoring natural fertility. Whereas when you freeze eggs, it's just one shot deal and you know, either are pregnant or not, but you're not reversing the uh, uh, hormonal uh, situation. And so these women that undergo the transplant, they would have you know, the equivalent of a 20 year old's ovary functioning and distributing estrogen and progesterone. Whatever age they have frozen the ovarian tissue. I'm not, you know, I have patients who have frozen the ovarian tissue when they were 17. So when you transplant them, technically, they came back at age 35. It's the quality of a 70-year-old's eggs. Wow. Not necessarily as many eggs, because in the process of transplantation, you're losing some eggs. But that's what it is. You're, you know, you're suspending the ovary in time, and then we're starting the clock once they're ready. So a, a couple Goodness. cliff notes for millennials, you know, people mm -hmm. in their 20s yeah. and early 30s. What do we need to know about fertility? You mentioned 35 fertility goes mm -hmm. down, correct? Yes. Anything else? Well, so... Um, yeah, so the first part is don't delay it, okay? So uh, um, if you're going to delay it, con consider uh, fertility preservation options, obviously egg freezing or ovarian tissue freezing. Um, the other thing is that I don't think millennials smoke much, but smoking is the enemy of uh, uh, reproduction. Uh, you know, p people who smoke, uh, women who smoke, they go to menopause on average two to three years earlier. Two to three years earlier? Two to three years earlier, oh. and uh, um, so smoking is... Uh, is one of the, the most well-known um, factors in affecting uh, egg quality and and, uh, and the age of menopause. And of course, you know, they have general health uh, um, precautions, um, uh, contraception, you know, barrier contraception, because easiest way to lose your fertility is have an STD, and that those infections would block your tubes up, both men and women, and uh, um, you know, resulting in infertility. Uh, those kind of mechanical problems we can solve it relatively easily uh, by in vitro fertilization, uh, but uh, that can also result in you know serious consequences affecting fertility as well. What about cost? Um, I think mm -hmm. you know the average egg freezing is around eight thousand um, dollars. What does an ovarian transplant cost? Well, uh, so the ovarian tissue freezing probably costs about the the same amount of uh, money. And then the transplants are right now we are uh, sort of uh, in a process of trying to get it accepted as uh, a standard procedure. In which case your insurance would In which case your insurance would cover. In the meantime, yeah, it is a struggle. We have to, you know, make deals with hospitals, you know, uh, you know case by case uh, to uh, uh, get the hospital cost covered. But that's going to vary. Awesome. Doctor, thank you so much thank for you. your words. Thanks Absolutely. for having me. Thank you.